Newton's first law says that an object in uniform motion remains in uniform motion unless acted upon by forces. Now, uniform motion is motion in a straight line at constant speed. We don't often see uh, pure, perfect, uniform motion in our everyday experience. It's somewhat of an ideal, partly because there are forces in, the, in our everyday experience that you simply can't turn off. And Newton's first law describes motion in the absence of forces. But I want to show you something that comes very, very close to uniform motion. See, the problem is, is that there are forces that you can't turn off. Gravity, for example, if we take this little car, gravity is something I can't simply switch off. So it's always there. And uniform motion is supposed to be the motion in the absence of forces. Another force that's very hard to turn off is friction. If I slide this along the track, there's a rubbing motion between the, the little glider and the surface of the track. And that drag force is a force that's very often um, present in one way or another in our everyday experience. But this device, this track, is a, a device that in some sense can turn off uh, gravity and the frictional force. Now it doesn't actually turn off gravity, but it does it in a, in a sort of a way. Gravity is a force, the pull of the Earth on this glider. It's a force downward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my track here to a blower. Although it's probably very difficult to see, there are tiny little holes all along this surface out of which jets of air are going to come when I turn on the blower. Now what I'm going to do is put my glider on the track like that, and it will still experience a force, the force of gravity, downward. But when I turn on the blower, I'm going to blow these little jets of, of air upward, and I'm going to do it just enough so that the force of those air jets creates a force on the glider which is opposite in direction to the force of gravity, but upward. And if I do it just right, those two forces are going to have the same strength but opposite direction. And in that sense, I'm going to kind of cancel out the effect of gravity. It would be as if gravity were turned off. Now, the second thing that happens when I turn on the jets of air is that the glider will now ride on a little cushion of air. That cushion of air has virtually no drag friction, uh, uh, will exert vir virtually no drag friction on the glider. So watch me now when I um, turn on the, uh, the uh, air supply, watch the motion with gravity essentially turned off and friction reduced to insignificance. And then you'll see a motion that is very, very close to uniform motion. Straight line, constant speed, until it hits the bumper at the end. When it hits the bumper and touches the bumper, the bumper exerts another force on it which changes its motion, changes it from uniform motion to, by changing the direction of the motion from this way to that way. But aside from that, between the bumpers at each end, the motion is almost uniform motion. Straight line, constant speed. Could you imagine that if the track were much longer, just make it as long as ever so long you could make it, infinite in length. Could you imagine that when I put this glider into motion on that very long, long air track, that it would continue in its uniform motion essentially forever. And that's what Newton's first law says. An object in uniform motion will continue in uniform motion forever until some kinds of forces from external objects change that motion.